How many know many are called and few are chosen? Thank you, Master. Psalm 1, verse 1. first word is blessed. What's the opposite of blessed? Cursed. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly or what we call rebellious. It's amazing how many people take counsel from an individual that's out of position. Nor stands in the path of sinners or liars or so forth. Bad company corrupts good habits. Amen? Nor sits in the seat of the scornful, critical, accusing. But he delights his law in the law or the, in the truth of the Lord. And in his law or in his truth, he meditates his words day and night. In other words, he's meditating He's focusing. Meditation is associated with focus. When you meditate, you focus. So when you focus on what God's promises are in truth, and the word says if you put them before you, who can be against you, right? And at his right hand are pleasures forevermore. It says if you do these things, you're going to be known as blessed. And he says in verse 3 that he will be a like a tree planted by the rivers of water, that's by the anoint of the, the river of life, that brings forth fruit in its season. In other words, you will have good fruit. Whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does will what? Prosper, advance, multiply. He said, but the godly or the rebellious are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind drives away. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the reward of, or judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. But the Lord knows the way of the righteous, and the way of the ungodly shall what? Perish. Perish. You know, we just sang a song about the new wine. And I really believe, you know, nothing comes without a crushing. And most of us were rescued because we reached the end of ourself. And when we finally reach the end of ourselves or somebody, you know, offended, so things that happen in our life cause us to begin to look up instead of everywhere else. And we never are to look anywhere else, you know. We're always to keep one eye on the Lord and one eye on your enemy. <laughs> and, and, and in this in this process that we're going through, which every, the world is whole going through, we know that there's a shaking and so forth. God is trying to bring a new fire to us. Because if darkness is going to increase, light ha must increase. Amen? And those who are not willing to allow the transition and the crushing... You know, when you take a diamond, which is very precious, and it's used for multiple things, but it's more used for uh, jewelry and, you know, things of that degree, and vanity, let's say, <laughs> or wealth, you know. Oh, there's, they found the biggest diamond, whatever, or somebody's been engaged and has got a rock and a half, you know. But anyways, the diamond does come without crush. It's crushed coal. It's crushed. And a diamond is transparent. Same thing with gold. It becomes transparent and reflective also when it is heated up and purified. So everything that God is doing right now is an area of purification and sanctification in his body. We are in storms. Now, this is just a storm that Florida went through. You know, you think about this. Why did Florida go through what it had to go through? Well, Florida is a place known as the anointing of God. Well, then why did this happen? Because God flooded every tunnel of corruption in Florida. 
See, but in this, we don't understand all of those areas. What are these tunnels? These tunnels where children were smuggled. These tunnels over corruption. All of these tunnels have been flooded. These ports that were bringing in and out things were not of God. Ports were destroyed. Boats were destroyed in certain areas. The coastal was hit pretty hard. But, you know, we all had to go through it. And how we go through it reflects where we are. And so in this, you know, when the storm comes, like the hurricane come, and there's all kinds of stuff, everybody's getting ready and get prepared and so forth. Did you ever notice that chaos brings uni unity? People care about one another then. You know, people share their electricity. <laughs> you know, they do whatever to help one another, generators and so forth. And, you know, and, you know, Every one of us has a storm. And, and these storms are, are storms of training. And you've heard me say this over and over. But there's an eye of the storm, and, and everyone has the eye of your storm. The eye of the storm is a place of regrouping because you just went through it all. And you know it's going to come again. It's a place of regrouping. It's a place to reset. It's a place to get reconnected a place of re-examine. It's a place to get repositioned to resist the remaining of the storms. And what is usually the uh, storms are emotional forces. You know, we see a lot of physical things uh, uh, that happen, but it, basically it's emotional that affects the most. Everybody has the eye of your storm. And it's what you do in that eye that matters tremendously. Psalm 37, verse 1. Do not fret because of evildoers, nor be envious of workers of iniquity. For they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. The first word here is trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. What's his faithfulness? His promises. Delight yourself also in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. So many times people think God's going to give me every desire of my heart. Not if it ain't of God. That's why he says delight in him, and that he will give you the desires of his heart that will be in your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in him. And he shall bring it to pass. He shall bring forth your righteousness as the light and your justice as the noonday. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Many people can't do that in the storm. Do not fret because of him who prospers in his way, because of the man who brings wicked schemes to pass. Cease from anger and forsake wrath, and do not fret. It only causes harm. For evil doers shall be cut off, but those who wait on the Lord shall inherit the earth. In other words, there's that blessing, there's that inheritance that will be released. What does the word tell us? After you've completed the assignment, the promise is released. Amen? So here's something very important. He says trust. He says rest. He says wait. And he says commit. We are always striving again to reach the third level of death. Amen. <laughs> the third level of death to self and to reach the third level of God's perfect will. So there's got to be things that, you know, so many times people are just not willing to accept the challenges and trials and tribulations and the events that are happening in their life. And they're not willing to learn from them or grow for them. They're still fighting for their life and sur instead of surrendering it. And Philippians chapter 2. You know, as you begin to reflect after everything that we have gone through through this storm. And you begin to self-examine and, you know, what could you have done to prepare? 
The Bible says be ready in season and out. Amen. And when you got to the eye of the storm, what did you do to prepare for the rest of it? In verse 1, let's speak it. Therefore, if there's any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any affection and mercy, fulfill my joy by being what? Like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord and of one mind. Do you think God's trying to bring us like-minded? Amen. Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit. But in loneliness of mind, let each one esteem others better than themselves. Let each of you look out not only for his own interests, but also for the interests of others. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Who, being in a form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking a form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of men. And being found in the appearance of a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death. You got to ask yourself, am I going to be, am I going to humble or am I humbled enough to be obedient to the point of death? Even the death of the cross. Therefore, God also has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above all every name. That the name of Jesus, every knee should bow and those in heaven, those on earth and those on under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but no much more in my absence. You know, it's not always how you obey in front of people. It's what you do behind closed doors. How you treat people, how you speak to people. But now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with what? Fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you both to will and to do his good pleasure. Now, do all things with what? Out complaining and disputing. And that you may become blameless and harmless children of God without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation among whom you shine as the lights in the world. That's where God wants to bring us. Holding fast the word of life so that I may rejoice in the day of Christ that I have not run in vain or labored in vain. Wow. Work out your own salvation. It is a predestined course to conform into his likeness of his character. God is predestined a course for us to go through. Looking out for others with a gentle approach of love, not accusing or a critical spirit, or blaming others for your reactions, but learning to deny your selfish pride of defense or reasoning. I'm going to say that again. Looking out for others with a gentle approach, a gentle approach of love. Not in accusing or a critical spirit or blaming others for your reactions, but learning to deny your selfish pride of defense. Everyone say selfish pride of defense or reasoning or what? Reasoning. Romans 8. Work out your salvation with fear, reverence, and trembling. If you're fighting for your life, you can't work out a salvation. It's impossible. If you live a life of surrender, you work it out. And Romans 8.18. Let's speak it. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Do you understand that we are approaching that place where the glory of God, when the second mantle is released, the glory of God will be revealed in us. 
We're getting closer and closer. But there's more storms that must be released. There's more dying. There's more shaking and a quaking. There's more denial of self. But it doesn't mean we won't be blessed. <laughs> Hallelujah. For the earnest expectation of creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God. For the creation was subjected to fertility not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in hope. Because the creation itself also will be re re delivered from the bondage of what? Corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. Now, this corruption is being exposed everywhere. I don't know if you heard this or not, but Putin himself shared that this Biden administration are nothing but Satanists. He said they are Satanists. And they are against their own people. And they're against the freedom of the world, and they're trying to control the world. And I'm not going to allow them to do that. Do you all hear that? So, he's not the only one. There are Arab kings who agree. There are also other rulers of other nations who agree. They see the satanic movement of this administration globally. And what they've done to humanity globally. That's why they're promoters of Trump. Because Trump was exposing it. I mean, but this was all on public news. It's been on YouTube. They are a satanic regime. A corrupt government that is trying to destroy their own people. In the world. That's pretty wa awesome. Verse 22. For we know that the whole creation groans and labors with birth pangs together until now. Not only that, but we also who have the first fruits of the Spirit, e even we ourselves groan within ourselves, eagerly waiting for the adoption and redemption of our body. For we are saved in this hope, but hope that is seen is not hope, for why does one still hope for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we eagerly wait for it with what? Perseverance. Likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weaknesses, for we do not know what we should pray for. But the Spirit himself makes intercessions for us or through us with groanings which cannot be uttered. In other words, there's a groaning inside of you and a tongue that can't be understood. Now, he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is because he makes intercessions for the saints according to the will of God. That's why it's so important about praying in tongues. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God and to those who are called according to his purpose. For whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he predestined, these he also what? Called. Whom he called, these he also justified. Whom he justified, these he also glorified. What then shall we say these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? Oh, if people would just know who they really are. The enemy keeps compromising our identities. And you know, when people go through stuff, go through storms, the first thing the enemy wants to do is steal your identity. If he can compromise and, and allow to steal your identity, man, you go back to who you used to be. Hallelujah. Matthew 13 and verse 24. Another parable Jesus put forth to them saying, the kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went away. Among the wheat. But when the grain had sprouted and produced a crop, then the tares also appeared. Boy, they're appearing everywhere, aren't they? So the servants of the owner came and said to him, Sir, do you not sow, did you not sow good seed in your field? How then does it have tares? 
And he said to them, an enemy has done this. The servant said to him, do you want us then to go and gather them up? And he said, no. Lest while you gather up the tears, you also uproot the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the what? Harvest. And at the time of the harvest, I will say to the reapers, first gather together the tares and bind them in the bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. Many have become tares instead of wheat. Many that were wheat have become tares. By sowing in the flesh of corruption. See, you and I, our sufferings, our sufferings are causing us to learn. Our sufferings are challenges, whether we're going to be obedient or compromise. We are challenged and in the physical, but we're not, we are not of the natural realm. We're not of the natural realm anymore, but we are of the supernatural, the eternal. With the divine nature, those willing to believe, receive, and stepping out of themselves into the Spirit of God. With the fruits and gifts of the Spirit in love. Again, this is where people lose their identity. They can begin to compromise their identity. We've got to understand, that even though we live in this place, we're not of this place anymore. You are not, oh, uh, you're, even though you can sense natural, you are still supernatural. You live above. See, everything is learning how to get above the storm. Does everybody get it? Everything's about learning to get above the storm. So many times we're fighting in the storm. Yes, we must resist the storm, but there's a place where you learn to get above it. And it doesn't affect you at all. Because you know that you know that you know if he's with you, who could be against you? No matter what's happening, it's going to work to the good. But see, many people try to fight in the storm who have not taken the time while they were in the eye of the storm to prepare. They can't get above because they're so caught up. They're caught up with the world's life. They're caught up with money. They're caught up with desires of the world, they're caught up with families, they're caught up with all kinds of things. Listen, for many of us, your family will follow you out of the storm. But if you're not ready <laughs> and you bring your family through the storm, everything can get destroyed. Is everybody okay? 2 Timothy 4, 1 through 5. I charge you, therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who will judge the living and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. You know, you, you wonder if these people realize that they can have to stand before the Lord, man. <laughs> they don't see that. They've been blinded. These people of corruption and constant lies and arrogance, disobedience and rebellion, they will stand before the Lord. Everyone. And we stand before him. For me and you, we should be standing before him every single moment. Amen? Preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Convince, rebuke, exhort with long suffering and teaching. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. But according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers. And they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned to a side to what? Fables, fables, voice of emotion, bringing lies and deception to an individual. Believing it's better on the, and greener on the other side when they get there, it's worse. <laughs> but you be watchful in all things. Endure afflictions, endure your challenges. Let the crushing come for new wine. Do the work of an evangelist. Another be, be a good witness be a good witness fulfill your calling or your ministry they're going to turn their ears away from the truth because they became terrors 
They call them terrorists now, but these are terrorists. Seeds of the enemy. These are wolves in sheep's clothing. They become, he says, become watchful and endure your challenges or your challenging storms. Be an example as a responder, not as a reactor in the storm. Amen? Don't freak out. You know what's happening? We are breaking out of comfort zone. What are we doing? Breaking out of comfort zone. So many people want like that comfort zone. We must learn to live out of the comfort zone. It's great to have everything, but when everything collapses, hallelujah. Let's go camping. Let's start a fire. Let's cook some hot dogs, s'mores, <laughs> whatever. See, we can turn it all to the good and be an example to those who are freaking out. Because look, at this is a simple storm, even though it's destructive. But there's more coming. And it might not be just a climate storm. There'll be an economic storm. There'll be a real estate storm. Things are going to happen. It's like, wait a minute. Isn't anybody going to stand up and fight? Your fight is in the spirit through prayer. That's our fight. Amen? Believe me, there's times when I want to go out there myself and slap some heads. What's the matter with you, man? But that's not what we're called to do yet, anyways. We want to be an example by allowing the divine nature to have its perfect place in us. Amen? 2 Peter chapter 2, and verse 18. He says, when these corrupt individuals speak great swelling words of emptiness, they allure through the flesh, through the lust of the flesh, that's desires, through lewdness, the ones who have actually escaped from those who live in error. So these people... I have escaped the pollution of the world. They know what the truth is. And now they're being sucked back in. While they promise them freedom or liberty, they themselves are slaves of corruption. For by whom a person is overcome by him, also he is brought into bondage. For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they again entangle in them and they're entangled in them and they are what? And they overcome. The latter end is worse than the beginning. So never think it can't get worse. Does everybody understand it? Never. You got to turn right away. For it would have been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than having known it, to turn from the holy commandment delivered to them. But it has happened to them, according to a true proverb, a dog, which means demonized person, returns to his own vomit, and a so having washed to the wilding in mire. Those that know the truth but don't practice the truth. And that many say, I'm trying. I'm trying. Trying ain't working. You must come to a place where you say, I will do, not I will try. When somebody says to me, I will try, that means that they still left themselves open. I will try. No, that ain't working. Well, I'll, give, I'll, I'll try the program for two weeks. Well, you ain't going to make it. Either you're going to do or you're not going to do. Because you still leave yourself open to the enemy. He loves that word, try. That's not committed. Does everybody see the difference and understand that? And your words will bind you. Hallelujah. I'm trying. I will try. No. You need to do. The Bible doesn't say, oh, try the word. It says, do the word. <laughs> Ephesians 5, verse 1. Therefore be what? Imitators of who? Yourself? Your neighbor? 
Be imitators of God as dear children. And walk in what? Walk in what? Love. As Christ also has loved us and given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling aroma. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not even be named among you or even rebellion. It is fitting for saints. Neither filthiness nor foolish talking or coarse jesting, which are not fitting, but rather giving of thanks. For this you know, that no fornicator, unclean person, nor covetous man who is an idolater has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of these things the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore do not be what? Partakers with them. Be imitators. Not of a carnal nature, which is corrupt, but of the divine nature. Acts 17. So no matter what storm you're going through, you will reach the eye. And I'll give you an opportunity to self-examine, reconnect, reset. Have you ever gone through something and wondered, what the heck? I just went through this. Why is this happening again? Because you were in the eye. And while you're in the eye, this is that time. They get reconnected, reset, reexamined. So that you're going to either, God's going to either bring you through it to rescue others, or he's going to bring you above it to show others. Hallelujah. Acts 17, 26. Uh, is everybody cool? It's supposed to be hot. What do you mean? <laughs> 26, let's speak it. And Jesus has made from one blood every nation of men to dwell on the face of the earth and has determined their pre-appointed times and the boundaries of their dwellings so that they should seek the Lord and hope that they might grow up for him and do what? Find him, though he is not far from each one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being. As also some of your own poets have said, we are the, his offspring. Therefore, since we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that divine nature is like gold or silver or stone or something shaped by art or man's devisings. Truly, these times of ignorance God has overlooked, but now commands all men everywhere to do what? Repent, because he has appointed a day on which he will judge the world in righteousness by the man whom he has ordained. He has given assurance of this to all by raising him from the dead. Man's devisings and heroes of carnality that are worshipped is dangerous. We see it all over the place. Sports heroes are worshipped, all kinds of stuff. Sports teams are worshipped. The time is at hand to trust, rest, and wait, or be taken back into the storm. Second Peter chapter 1. And you know, when you don't pass the test of God, he retests. Now, you just don't know when he's going to retest is the whole thing. <laughs> Second Pete chapter 1, in verse 1. Is everybody there? Simon Peter, bondservant and apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who have obtained like precious faith with us. So was he writing to those who are, do not receive or are not in the same kind of faith? No. And saving of Jesus Christ, and by the righteousness of our Lord God and saving Savior Jesus Christ. Grace, peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God. I believe that's revelation knowledge. And of Jesus our Lord. As his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life. Many people don't believe that. 
and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue or power by which have been given to us exceedingly great precious promises that through these you may be what partakers so do you have to believe the promises to partake yes <laughs> that means you got to live from the future that through these you may be partakers of the promises of the divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. But also for this very reason, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, to virtue, knowledge, to knowledge, self-control. To self-control, perseverance, to perseverance, godliness. To godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly love. For if these things are yours and abound, you will neither be what? barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ for he who lacks these things is short-sighted even to blindness and has forgotten that he was cleansed from his old sins therefore brethren be even more diligent to make your call and election sure for if you do these things you will what never stumble so for an entrance will be supplied to you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ the divine nature I want to call this a, you know, it's a third level in a complete area of trust. You know, we're always reaching the third level. Amen? So we can express the nature of Christ. Galatians 5. I got a call this morning from someone, and the, and the person said to me, hey, there's somebody I know that, that you know. And he says he knows you. And uh, told me his name. And I said, yeah, yeah, I was in the drug world with him many years ago. And I've seen him in jail, in and out of jail, detoxes multiple times. I keep inviting him to come to the program. She goes, yeah, he said he won't come because you won't let him work for nine months. And I said, well, no, that's not true. But, you know, I said, yeah, he's, of course, I think he's on. Oxycontin now, I'm no longer using heroin. Okay. So he's free. No, no, he's not free. The only thing I can share is, well, just be careful because he won't last long. He's usually a good two or three week person, then he goes. But again, in this, here, here's an individual that knows, but he believes that he's trying to stay busy, but he doesn't understand the demons in him can't give him rest can't give him rest they torment they push they harass can't give him rest he's never reached a place of rest I've known him for years the only time he rests is when he's arrested but he still can't rest he's got to hustle and bustle even while he's in jail or detox but, you know, I, 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 I'm sharing this because he's an individual that goes back all the time. Never willing to give up that old life. Believes you can still do the same things without drugs and alcohol, but doesn't realize he's addicted. Many people are in that same circumstance. They're tares. They're not wheat. They're not walking in the divine nature of God. They can't express the character of Christ. It's impossible for them. Because they do not know how to deny themselves. They don't know how to pick up the cross and fight. And they're not willing to. They want everything done for them. This is where they cannot work out their own salvation because they're not willing. Hallelujah. Galatians 5, 7. It says, you ran well. Who hindered you from obeying the truth? This persuasion does not come from him who calls you. Well, who does it come from? The enemy. Amen. A little leaven leavens a whole lump. The word leaven means evil. I have confidence in you, in the Lord, that you will have no other mind, thought pattern. But he who troubles you shall bear his judgment, whoever he is. And I, brethren, if I still preach circumcision, why do I suffer persecution? Then the offense of the cross has ceased. I could wish that those who trouble you would even cut themselves off. But you, brethren, have been called to freedom or liberty. Only do not use this freedom as an opportunity to fulfill your flesh. But through love, serve one another with respect and honor. 
For all the laws fulfilled in one word, even in this love, you shall love your neighbor or your brother as yourself. But if you bite and devour one another, beware lest you become consumed by one another. So I say, walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another so that you do not do the things that you wish or desire. For if you are led by the Spirit of God, you're not under the law of death. <laughs> Bite and devour one another by words, attitudes, motives. It's destructive. Destruction always comes. You know, the enemy likes to bring division. You know, people get, they get in arguments and so forth because they're just trying to prove themselves to be right. And there's only one right. None of us are right. Only he's right. Amen. Then you've got to, but see, because they're not discerning enough, not realizing that a spirit is there activating an argument. A spirit is there provoking something. A spirit is there to provoke an individual. Then somebody else wants to get in and, and, and do whatever and so forth. And what, now you've got a household that other demons from everywhere is coming. Every hell has been released. Why? Because they know there's a full course meal there. Let's go eat. Why? Because they get fed by emotion. Does everybody get it? Man, we, I, I can sense when something's up. Man, I know when my people bring something in my house, I have to clean that house. I don't have to go to that person and say, man, you brought something in my house. I just go and clean the house. Everybody must work out their own salvation. Everybody. There's no excuse. You can't work out somebody else's. But if you're not an individual that's self-examining and willing to do and stop trying, you'll constantly go in that cycle. You'll repeat everything. Hallelujah. Hebrews 12, and we'll close here. 25. See that you do not refuse him who speaks. For if they did not escape who refused him who spoke on earth, much more shall we not escape if we turn away from him who speaks from heaven, whose voice then shook the earth, but now he has promised, saying, Yet once more I shake not only the earth, but also heaven. Now this, yet once more, indicates the removal of those things that are being shaken as of things that are made, that the things which cannot be shaken may what? Remain. So many people are easily shaken. Their focus is on other things than it should be. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us have grace by which we may serve God acceptably with reverence and what? Godly fear. For our God is a what? Consuming fire. Shaking will continue and the storms will come. It is what you do to prepare for the storm and how you respond in the eye of the storm. To get you through the storm or above it, uncontaminated. Amen. Uncontaminated. So, Father, we thank you for your glory. We thank you for your word. We thank you for revealing the storms and what to do. You are always there to guide us, and the Spirit will tell us what to do, how to do it, and when to do it. Amen. He makes a way where there seems to be no way. So, Lord... Prepare our hearts for communion and let your name be glorified in everything we do that we may be imitators of you and the expression of your divine nature in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen.